Good evening. Uh, let us stand as we begin this evening. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered into his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may also share in his resurrection. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and lives ever. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. And some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? And they answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. And many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the field. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. And dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us pro proceed forth in peace. Exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise Him.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let us be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them, morning after morning. He opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. today our lectors will do the part of the narrator and the crowd I mean the narrator and the voice and uh, I will do the part of Christ and uh, the, uh, the congregation will do the part of the crowd During the festival, for fear that they may be alive among the people. Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, 
wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and, and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dipped with me into the dish. For the Son of, of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. That after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed 
saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as, as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, that that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of these witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. 
he broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when, when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, he says that he, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross. And and the the Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, and at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, <laughs> One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry, and breathed his last. Just remain standing, so we will pause for a moment in silence.
The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and of Joses and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Each uh, year as Holy Week begins, the church presents us with uh, the passion account that comes from the gospel of the year. And this year we're reading primarily the gospel of Matthew, uh, I'm, I'm, excuse me, Mark. And um, it's one of the more moving liturgical readings that we hear all year. Uh, in Mark's narrative, you know, and it's the shortest, in some ways it's the starkest, uh, the saddest accounts of them all. Uh, Jesus himself laments at one point that my soul is sorrowful even unto death. And again and again we encounter words like betrayer and treachery. Um, Compared with the other evangelists, Mark records very little of what Jesus says to those who are accusing him. He says nothing at all to the high priests and only answers a few words to Pontius Pilate, as if Jesus knows that they've already made up their minds. They're not open to the truth. So Mark's narrative has sometimes been dubbed the account of the three Simons because it starts with Simon the leper in, in Bethany where the woman enters and anoints Jesus uh, and Jesus responds by saying she is anticipating the anointing of my body for burial. In frustration in Gethsemane, uh, we find Peter, James, and John uh, not awake and praying with Jesus, but sound asleep. And Jesus reverts to uh, Peter's original name, Simon. Simon, why are you sleeping? And then finally we encounter the third Simon, Simon of Cyrene, who helps Jesus to carry the cross. In Mark's gospel, the, the dying moment of Jesus is uh, quite dramatic and quite different from that recorded in the other three. As we just heard at about three o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus cries out in a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then Mark writes that shortly thereafter, Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And often people hear those words of Jesus and think, like all of us, did he maybe fall into despair? Had he given up? 
And if he had, then Christianity would never have gotten off the ground. And no one would have bothered to write any accounts of his life. But Mark is putting on the lips of Jesus the very first lines of Psalm 22. And if you read the entire psalm, it's really a cry of victory. Um, In the garden, of course, Jesus is praying that this moment should pass him by. Yet he says, not as my as I will but as you will you know the final portion of Psalm 22 is actually a wonderful hymn to God who will always save his people Mark's passion account also ends on a hopeful note no sooner has Jesus died than the veil of the sanctuary is torn in two And a pagan soldier solemnly declares, truly, this was the Son of God. And we are told that women, such as Mary Magdalene, who had been good friends and a disciple for years, uh, gathered with others, other friends of Jesus, such as Joseph of Arimathea, to prepare and bury and then keep watch over the body of the slain Jesus. We may be saddened by the passion account of Mark that we have just heard, but we know that the life of Jesus did not end there, where where the account ends. When we gather again to worship next Sunday on Easter, having relived with Jesus during this coming week, his suffering death, and resurrection, we shall celebrate his glorious and triumphant victory and our own salvation as well. And let us now stand as we offer our petitions and prayers to Almighty. that all who carry the cross of suffering from illness or violence may take comfort in example of Jesus who gave his life for the salvation of us all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of the recent mass shootings and the victims of the many storms and tornadoes in our southern states, that their friends and families may be consoled in their grief by the love and assistance of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, that God will turn hearts from violence and open new paths to understanding and respect for one another so that all may live in peace and security, we pray to the Lord. For those who will be baptized and received into the church at the Easter Vigil, that these final days of preparation will be a time of transforming grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have lost loved ones, that they may realize that because of the sacrifice of Jesus, the death is never the end of the story for people of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God. We ask you to bless us in this holy week and help us to worthily prepare to celebrate your victory over sin and death. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, 
above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known. Above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Crucified, laid behind the stone, you live to die, rejected and alone like a rose, trampled on the ground, you took the fall and thought of me above all. Crucified, laid behind the stone, you live to die, rejected and alone like a rose, trampled on the ground, you took the fall and thought of me above all like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me above all Pray with me now that our sacrifice may be acceptable and pleasing to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit yet by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, <laughs> and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, 
that he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Jesus, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may be chosen to share in eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus. With him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord. And Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <coughs> Let us offer to one another a sign of peace.
is the Lamb of God, Jesus, who takes away our sins. Blessed are we who share at his table. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter me, but only
Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, the justice through the death of your Son, who have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Uh, the liturgical minister schedules are available on the table over by the exit. We have confession times here tomorrow afternoon at 1.30, from 1.30 to 2.30 in church, and on Monday evening from 5 to 6 p.m., also in church. Please note that the Wednesday Mass will be at 8 a.m., since school gets out on Tuesday. Um, please note that next Sunday morning, the next Saturday evening, uh, the Mass will be at 8 p.m. in church, with the vigil service. And on Sunday morning, if you're coming Easter Sunday morning, the Masses will be at 8 and 10. Uh, St. Vincent de Paul, as their little fundraiser here at Easter time every year. You can pick up a, have baskets of eggs over there, empty eggs. You can fill them and bring them back with a donation uh, next Sunday when you come for Easter, uh, the Easter celebration. Um, we have plenty of palms, uh, more palms for tomorrow, so there's some left over there, help yourself. And if you didn't get the new missile left, they're also on the table over there. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Our closing song is number 701 in your music issue books if you have them. Lift high the cross, number 701.